Big break night, big break, semi-final night, three contestants tonight, but only one can go through to tomorrow's final. We've already heard from Mohamed Kazem of Alink Personal Assistant and Deviani Dayal of She Moves. Now, I'm delighted to welcome our third and final contestant this evening into the studio. A very warm welcome back to Jill Gordon-Keep of Works Interior Decoration. Jill, good to see you. Thank you for having me back. We're going to talk about your company in a little bit more detail later on. First of all, we'll get straight to our task. You're going to face our judges this evening, NASA Al Madani, Assistant Director General, Dubai Airport Free Zone, and Edward Roderick, Co-Chairman of Investors MENA. Here's a scenario. You'd be given 48 hours to prepare for this. Basically, come up with a turnaround strategy for a large, high-profile global company that's currently facing serious challenges. You've got a meeting with the Board of Directors, our judges, you are a prospective candidate for CEO. Now, tonight's scenario is this. The New York Times company stock down 20% in 2011, 60% over the past five years. They fired their chief executive. Still profitable, but revenue is falling sharply as the newspaper industry comes under fire from the internet. What would you do, Jill gordon Keep, to turn around the New York Times company? First question to Edward Roderick of Investors Mina. What's wrong and why? Okay, um, I think the main industry-wide problem is that despite the fact that news companies actually have more consumers than ever and their content's more popular, especially with young people, consumers aren't paying. They're going online and they're getting their news for free from instead of actually buying it from newspapers and magazines. In terms of something relating specifically to NYTC, I think that the the CEO who has who's been ousted, she was she knew exactly about the dynamics of the print publishing business, but that's not the situation with the newspaper industry anymore. And more and more revenue is actually going to come from digital online advertising. Second question to Nasa Al Madani. Jill, what would you do as or, or a number, a few actions uh, that you would take to increase revenue as quick wins? Right, okay. Um, I've got a few short term strategies that I would um, look to employ. The first is that I think it's really important and crucial that we send out a strong message to our clients, to our consumers and to our shareholders that we're doing great. Yes, we're going through a transitional period, but we're looking towards a bright future. The second thing I would do is I would actually look to employ a number two from an established digital advertising company. I'm not talking about a top level executive, but a high level individual who's probably actually the ideas person in their present company. The next thing I would do is I would try and roll out a marketing campaign. And I've had a, I've had a few ideas for slogans in my mind, thinking um, probably with the New York Times, because it's one of their flagship publications, and do something like, um, we've w- you've woken up to us for over 100 years, now we're waking up to... Uh, now you're waking up for the future, we're waking up to you for the future. And I think what we could do is we could release the printed publication for free for two days, followed immediately by the online facility, free access to that for maybe a week, with the objective being to get as many people as possible reading the material that the New York Times are providing. And also increasing online traffic will increase our digital revenue. And the other thing that I think is quite important for NYTC is it's the family legacy. And I think that that's actually an important marketing tool that we could use in a campaign like that, especially during this type of climate and economy and touching against um, people's values. And and the next thing that I would do is I would would want to do quite a detailed review of about.com. Obviously that was acquired for some like $400 million. But despite the fact that its revenues plummeted 21% last year or in the, the third quarter of last year, it actually accounts for 30 percent of NYTC's operating profit. So I think if you really look closely at that, people would see, we would find that it actually requires more investment in order to flourish. Edward? Some of those things you said were all about costs. Yeah. Getting the number two, doing it, advertising, talking about values and whatever. I'm not sure whether the family values you saw as positive or negative, but going back to the point, how are you going to boost revenues really rapidly? Well, I think 
I think that by by using something like the campaign where there is the free access, you're going to get more of an online I mean, ultimately what we want to have is we want to have online subscriptions. I think at the end of the day, what's going to happen in the, in the long term is that we're going to have to drastically reduce the, the printed material and focus on getting people online. And I actually, I was thinking about having something like a micro payment facility as a transitional tool. What, what's been the decline then in the number of print media readers? Um, what, what's caused the decline? Well, no, I mean, how much has that decline been? Because your suggestion is that you get out of print media and focus more on the online element of it. But is there actually a, a major decline going on in the number of print readers? I don't know the exact um, numbers for the decline in the print readers, but I do know that what's been happening, whereas the, cause these companies, basically NYTC still gets a lot of revenue through their printed advertising. Um, and But this is shifting and it's starting to go towards the digital advertising. And I think that, yeah, there will always be people that like to hold the, new, the actual physical newspaper in their hands. But I think to a certain extent that's towards the, the older generation and that's that's always not always going to be the case. So we have to be pushing people and also educating consumers or users to the fact that printed material content needs to be paid for, whether it's print or whether it's online. And that in itself will create value because it will force the journalists to produce valued work. A couple of final questions, one each to our judges. First of all, Nasa Almadani. Uh, Jill, uh, talking about the website, yes, uh, you said that one of the strategies is maximizing revenue from the website. Mm. Now, w- apart from subscription, mm-hmm. how would you maximize that revenue? Right, okay. I mean, obviously the subscription is in place and there are various options that you can go with for that. And I, I assume that, well, I know that over a period of time that's going to continue and evolve and change. They also have the paywall facility that had a few teething issues in the interim, but I think it's a great thing because at the minute there is the incentive that you go on, you have your 20 free articles over a period of a month um, and then your paywall comes up. But the, the, micro mani- uh, the micro payment system that I think would really help but purely as a transitional tool it's it's something a wee bit like iTunes where it's a really easy thing to use for the consumer you just type in a password and you've made a payment you move quickly through to the next step to actually have the 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 product you've bought be it an article or a full daily edition Um, and I think these easy things especially when the, the demographic is that there's more and more young people who are who are reading the news something like that is really important as a transitional tool ultimately what we want is the monthly subscriptions Final question to Edward. How much do you think may be that the, the, the content element of the newspaper may, not, may no longer suit the readership or may not suit the readership that they would like to attract? I think that that's, there's always going to be that situation and I think it's very important, especially when you see what's happening with the evolving industry and the change of de- demographic, that our journalists um, continue to produce work that that hits that audience and so i think naturally it would change over time and it would have to keep changing along with along with the industry jill thank you very much indeed Jill Gordon, keep then of Works Interior Decoration. Thanks for your comments on the New York Times strategy. Let's talk a little bit more about Works Interior Decoration. I know last month you were on talking in some detail about the company, but just refresh our memories. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes now. 30 seconds, first of all, just what is it, the nuts and bolts in layman's terms, Works Interior Decoration? What do you do? Works Design Build is a small company with six years of experience in Dubai. We offer a complete range of design and technical services that cover all aspects of the design and fit out of commercial, retail and residential environments. We deliver innovative and functional fit out and design solutions using superior quality craftsmanship on time and I think importantly within our client's budget. Talk to me, you're quite a well-established company. Can you give me an indication of turnover or profitability? Yes. Last year, our turnover was 18 million. Um, 2.7 of which was profit and this has actually increased what I should say as well is that we had a turnaround strategy ourselves back in after 2009 because we saw our revenue drop by 60% um, and then we changed things around and then in 
2010, we actually had a 400% increase in revenue, which which was fantastic. And then we had a 20% increase in revenue last year. So... Interesting stuff. I'm going to throw this open to our judges now. First of all, question to NASA uh, Al Madani. Jill, convince me to buy from you. Okay, well, I would assume that you have an office space that you are looking to, to change. Um, and what I would do is I would tell you a little bit about company, the, the, the main things that I've already gone through. Um, but what I'd want to know from you is what your brief is. And I'd also want to show you the work that we've already done, um, which is extensive. We have an extensive portfolio of clients um, ranging from Dubai Bank, Leo Burnett, Fonterra, the, the list goes on. And sizes ranging from 200 square metres to entire G plus five buildings. So now, what 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 differentiates you from the other decorators? OK, well, actually, I think what differentiates us is also what helped us turn around after 2009. Um, and we started to focus more on client brand and tech technology centric approach to our design and presentation. Um, and I think it's really important because what it's done is it's we are offering our clients more for their money because a lot of these things they would usually have to look to outsource to say a branding or advertising company or specialist technology companies but we're integrating everything together because I actually think they, they, they're very closely aligned with each other uh, and the interiors. A couple of questions to I Edward. didn't quite understand that. What does it mean in simple language for me? Okay. So if I come along to you, yeah. how is it different? Um, with this so-called technology integration and whatever. What do you do that makes it so much different? Okay, well, I know we're different because our, our, our competitors don't do this. But when we take an initial brief from a client, we don't only look to what their standard requirements are for their office or whatever the space is in terms of this many closed offices, this many workstations. We look at their brand and how we can enhance the brand. And we also look at what type of technology we can put into the design that will be user friendly uh, and help with the func daily function of the office. And that is something that usually clients would have to outsource. Edward, final question to you. So this is an integrated approach to yes. things rather than a diversified approach. Yeah. Ha what did that engage you in? What did you have to change inside the company in order to be able to do that? Well, we had to employ a couple of different people who had um, broader skill sets, I guess, which is also important for a small business. Um, and we also had to spend more time on the, the design aspect of things which I think is all too easily just cut and paste and churned out in Dubai um, and there is a risk of that continuing um, but so changing adding a couple of new employees and changing direction which is, is usually time spent initially before you then work and go into the execution phase of the project that are the, those, are, those are the main changes Jill thank you very much indeed thank you Jill Gordon, keep there, of Works Interior. Listen, Jill's going to wait in the green room now with all the other three, con well, three contestants in total this evening. We're going to turn the speakers up so they can listen to our judges talking about the, the companies and the presentations we've heard, but also so many text messages this evening. Thank you so, so much for those. Keep them coming. Any thoughts on Mohamed Kazem of A Link Personal Assistant, Daviani Dial of She Moves, or, as you just heard, Jill Gordon Keep of Works Interior. We'd love to hear from you. We'll be going through those in just a couple of moments' time. 